All right, greetings from the dark continent. Conscious Caracol here, here to shine a little bit more light on the goings on down south. And tonight, I've got a few oaks here that uh, you might not know because they are from a YouTube channel uh, that's quite new relatively uh, to the YouTube uh, online commentary sphere in South Africa when it comes to, to YouTube. A lot of us have been around for quite a few years, but I think uh, they maybe have some interesting insights to give us, maybe some perspectives that a lot of my audience have not uh, been exposed to. So I'm talking to the guys behind the Reactionary Opinions channel, uh, and they are Scott, Russell, and Dylan. So welcome to the show, gents. Thanks, Ernst. Good to be here. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. Thanks, Good Ernst. Good to, be, good to be here. Hmm. All right. So I think the, the, the broad themes that we're going to discuss tonight are pretty much the, the idea of community, the idea of what authority means to you, maybe your thoughts on the lockdown. And we're going to see where things go from there. But let's start off at something very basic, something that you guys talk a lot actually uh, on your channel about. And that is the idea of uh, the, the community and its role and its value to not only uh, to the individual, if you could put it that way, but the, the value of the community that, as it has been throughout human history and what its role is. So um, I, think, I think, do you, mind, do you guys mind if I drop something? Go in for there? it, Scott, go for it. Um, so... With regards to community and um, communitarianism, the word again, um, I, 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 honestly, I don't, I don't see communitarianism really as an ideology. I see it more as something that is that is just natural, um, human nature. Uh, myself, Dylan, and Russell obviously talk about um, the family a lot and the importance of the family and how the family is your basic model of the smallest. Um, Sort of government again this also ties in with with authority so you have family. within the family um, we're obviously a christian uh, channel uh, you have christ at the top the father the mother and then the mother presides over the children and that sort of spreads out into the community and then eventually into society as at large so i don't think the i, I think the idea of communitarianism as an ism uh, because, you know, any time that there's an, a word in front of an ism, there's a whole bunch of complicated ideas and, and stuff and it tends to become an ideology. And I think it's just human nature because I think that ideologies, um, they tend not to move um, towards human nature. They tend to move further away from human nature and into humanism which is, you know, and materialism utopianism. and all of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So utopianism and stuff. So, so look, the idea of, of, of um, communitarianism and stuff, um, I believe is not, is, is more sort of a, 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 um, a worldview or a, a natural occurrence rather than an actual ideology. Because Russell and I spoke about this last night on our live stream is that, you know, all these ideologies, you know, libertarianism, Marxism, um, you know, um, anarchy or anarchism and stuff of all, all these isms that were sort of thought up and come up with in intellectual um, circles and universities. And they were just sort of dreamt up, you know, and these guys sort of started creating these ideologies, whereas, you know, communitarianism has just always been. So it's it's just human nature. It's the most natural cause. So that's what you know. You guys want to add something, Dylan and Russell? Yeah, um, I guess this <clears throat> sort of one of the ideas I've been thinking about, and this is kind of I guess probably a traditional Christian perspective on the matter is that the idea that it's either individualism or communitarianism is kind of a false dialectic in a sense. So it's both, right? So I'm, we're all shaped by our environment, we're shaped by our upbringing, we're shaped by place, by culture. But um, within that framework, we sort of carve off our own niche, right? So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm from Alaska, you know, part of the United States, I, I grew up in a red state, and you know, that sort of affects the way I think and perceive things. But on the other hand, you know, within that sort of niche, um, or, or I'm sorry, within that sort of paradigm, I sort of carve out my own niche. So it's a little bit of both, right? So you think it's not just, you know, it's me versus the community. It's a holistic um, 
I guess, perspective, right? And if you, to use religious iconography, if you look at the Trinity, right, it's, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three in one, you know? So you have separate aspects within the, which comprise the whole, but they, um, they form a kind of a unit. But within that unit, you have distinction. I guess that's what I'd say. Yeah, look, the only thing I'd like to add is a lot of people can't seem to grasp the idea, like uh, uh, Dylan said, this false uh, dichotomy thing. A lot of people can't seem to see um, two con seemingly conflicting ideas as correct at the same time. Um, a lot of people can't seem to get their heads around that. You know, we've been forced into this either or situation. And um, if Scott Fitzgerald once, once coined it well, he said that signs, signs of maturity are to hold two conflicting ideas in your head at the same time and retain the ability to function. Um, that's the sign of uh, maturity or intelligent maturity. And I think with regards to how a community and, 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 and families and that sort of thing operate, it's, it's merely a case for me is um, the, the, the families create a community and create the boundaries in which the families and the individuals operate within. So they, they're dependent on one another. So the community sets the boundaries and within that there's freedom for the individuals. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't have to be a, um, uh, for that community, they have sufficient freedoms. You, an outsider mustn't come into that community and tell them they've got no freedoms. You know, that's upsetting the, 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 the whole apple cart, you know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, then it right. just becomes imperialism, which hmm. liberalism yeah. is. No, well, uh, that's the whole thing. Uh, that was one of the points that we made in our debate, not to, to end up talking about the debate too much, um, is that whole idea of uh, imperialist thought, where you think you know what's best for the world. You think you know uh, what's best for these uncivilized folk, and that they just need to accept it, uh, and, and they will thank you in the end, is almost the, the, the thing that's driving it. Where, from a community perspective, um, I think uh, it's just the mantra of our mutual recognition in terms of, yes, I, I mutually I recognize you or the other communities around me. I'm not trying, going to try and meddle in their affairs, and they are going to grant me the same. It's like that golden rule of treat others the same way as you'd like to be treated. And I think that is the, the bedrock of, the, of any type of community thought that is sustainable and healthy. As soon as you start to try and dictate to your uh, neighbors or people around you on how they should live because you don't like the way they are doing things or you think they could do something better, you're always going to run into obstacles. You're always going to run into tension. And that's how you get uh, that's how you get empires. So and I think there is something that you touched on that's that's very interesting uh, is the, the, the this idea of a dichotomy. So something that you've mentioned on your channel is that uh, you don't like the fact that people will have to choose between the dichotomy of whether they want to be capitalist or communist. Now, uh, what are the alternatives if not those two? Dylan, I think you should uh, talk about this because, you know, you are... Yeah, I'll go for it, Dylan. Right. <laughs> okay, okay. So I guess, so what I was talking to the guys about last night is that I see capitalism as a tool, right? So the study of economics is a discipline, right? Like any other, like anthropology, sociology, anything like that. So it's, it's a way of understanding how certain processes work, market processes, right? So capitalism is basically should be a tool in service of the community, right? So it's not a holistic worldview of itself. If your goal is to, you know, uh, make society rich as soon as possible. Yeah. You know, there are certain things you can adopt, but you know, maybe if whatever, like you value, uh, you know, um, like certain local industry or whatever, maybe, you know, you want to slap up some tariffs or something. <laughs> so just as an example, now, of course, you get dicey in the sense that, you know, uh, interventions can have some unintended consequences. That's certainly true. And, uh, specific example, I know the, um, Indian uh, it, government, after achieving independence, basically put strong protections against foreign uh, imports, specifically to protect uh, local Indian manufacturing. But that ultimately ended up causing a lot of suffering in terms of starvation, uh, first and foremost. So it's 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 a fine line you got to walk. You know, you can't be too reckless. And I do think that 
you know, a freer market is a better market in terms of wealth generation and encouraging, you know, prosperity, but it can't be your whole worldview. You know, my whole worldview was just like, oh, property rights, uh, capitalism. Yes, yes, yes. Like I can build a whole worldview around free markets, but you really can't. I mean, <laughs> so, and I guess that's sort of the, the point I wanted to make is that, yeah, uh, free markets, capitalism, private ownership of the means of production, these are tools with which we build society. It's not society itself, if that makes any sense. It's, yeah. not, it's not your guiding star. Your guiding star is not capitalism. Mm. Your guiding star has to be something transcendent and more important than that. Yeah, so that's that's the whole thing, um, Ernst, is that what, what capitalism, you see the, the, the similarities between capitalism and communism, okay, is, and these are the realities, I mean, we see it in, 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 the, in, in around, happening all around us, and this is the whole thing about, about a, having a reactionary mindset, is you see things happening around you, and you wake up in the morning, and you're pissed off at the world, because the world is not what you, what, what you, what you remember, it's all changed, it's all flipped upside down, okay? But anyway, back to the, the, the communist versus capitalist thing, okay? What happens in both of those, okay, is that the majority of the wealth ends up in a certain amount of people's hands anyway with capitalism as it does with communism, okay? But what happens with, what happens also with, like, down the stream, to in capitalism and in communism is that individuals because if you make both of those things your worldview what you've basically done is you've made yourself and your ideology has made you into an economic unit to be exploited in any way shape or form communism and capitalism does exactly the same thing that's the the whole point between yes capitalism makes a lot more wealth if you want to build wealth you use capitalism and stuff but it has to be a tool, okay? Communism is a cucker tool, okay? You know, it's like it's like a cheap, you know, spanner that you buy at Builder's Warehouse, okay? Cap uh, capitalism is like a full-on freaking jackhammer, you know, a 10,000 rand jackhammer. I don't know how much jackhammers cost, but whatever, an expensive jackhammer, okay? So it gets the job done much better than a cheap spanner, okay? But there has to be more than that. Okay, especially if you want to make it your worldview, you cannot make it your worldview. If you do, you simply become a economic unit to be exploited. Mm. Mm. Right. And, another thing, and another thing I'd like to add is um, people that call themselves libertarians or capitalists or something like that. There's a couple of things that uh, they seem to claim as their own, for instance, private property rights. Now, Private property rights didn't come with capitalism. Capitalism came because of private property rights. Private property rights have been around long before capitalism and Adam Smith and, and company um, decided to make a science out of economics. Um, you know, private property rights go back to the Ten Commandments, for instance. You know, it, it, it literally goes that far back. Um, you know, and, you know, there's, there's a number of other things that, um, like Scott said, you use it as a tool, but a lot of people will claim that, um, uh, for instance, that's one thing that capitalists always claim, oh, wait, you private property rights, so you must be capitalist. No, not necessarily. You know, that's that's just one part of um, capitalism that is essential, which which the science has, has said, which is essential to building wealth, just confirm that private property rights. But private property rights, to a lesser or greater degree, have actually always existed. They all they've got all the all the economists like Adam Smith actually did was recognize through evidence based uh, looking objectively and seeing it. They just saw that this works. So, yeah, you know, just because you believe in private property rights, for instance, doesn't make you a capitalist. And if you are a only time you're a capitalist is when you're actually owning the means of production, right? So if you are just an employee in a company, you're just selling your labor to the capitalist. You can never be a capitalist without owning them any sort of means of production. Yeah, because you're not taking a risk. You're not financing anything. You're just, you know, just an employee. You're not a capitalist. This is the reality of it. It's not, it's just, it's bizarre how people miss these things when they're literally right in front of them. I don't know. It must be a, an ideological blindfold. I don't know. Mm. So something uh, interesting, a uh, remark I see in the chat, I'm just going to bring it up. 
Uh, Sideliner opinion says unbridled capitalism creates the monster of individuals with more power than states. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, on well, that? we see that we see that happening. We see that happening in in the U.S. at the moment. I mean, it's it's you know multi billionaire you know people up um, like uh, what's his name um, uh, the the Amazon dude uh, uh, Jeff is it Jeff Be Bezos and stuff so politically Bezos, connected yeah. uh, so politically connected I think I think Dylan I think you could give us some sort of insight on how the you know how the the these multi billionaires in the U S are basically controlling. Uh, they control the economy in a in a big way. In well, not not only the economy, they control of so many different aspects of the U.S. Yeah, well, I think there's a couple of things to note here. So first, the modern corporation is basically a a legal construct, right? So it's it's not it's a re it's a relatively speaking a fairly new phenomenon, and goes hand in hand with sort of state power and state control. Um, so <clears throat> traditionally speaking, you would have, you know, sole proprietorships and then you'd have partnerships, which were also not, you know, <laughs> incredibly old either. And then after that, you had the development of the holding company in sort of what is called the Gilded Age, right? So <clears throat> I think that's sort of part of the issue is now instead of having an individual in control of a business and being accountable for it. Now it gains legal personhood so that individuals operating within it can't be held liable to the same extent that a private it, business was owner would be. Uh, Instead of owners. Was that Mitt Romney that said corporations? Yeah, that was Mitt Romney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was Mitt Romney. So, and it, and instead of having, you know, an owner class sort of calling this their own uh, property, now you have basically a managerial elite, right? So, and they are accountable to their shareholders and their shareholders is in constant expansion, right? So if you, whereas if you have like a private enterprise, maybe you grow up to a certain size and you're like, all right, cool, everything's fine, business is good. You don't have this constant need to expand all the time based on your shareholders leaning on you. Leaning on you. And I guess the other uh, aspect of this I would point out is that, um, is the issue of fractional reserve banking, right? So because banks are able to basically create funny money, so you deposit 10 Rand at the bank, they hold one Rand in reserves, they loan out the other nine Rand, then the banks that process are basically creating money. So that adds a lot of um, you know risk in the system, right? So then you have bank runs, you have banking panics, you have inflation, and that also causes business cycles. So, and that also coupled with the government interplay with uh, the limited liability corporation with the, um, uh, the emphasis on constant expansion, this managerial elite class compared to the capital owning class with the funny money creation, it creates all kinds of problems that you wouldn't see in a I guess, sort of a true free market situation or a more traditional um, market environment. Hmm. Um, but yeah, no, uh, before we move on. Also, I just want to say, uh, I apologize if you hear, if anyone hears any crying, it's, it's my son. So he just got his shots today. So if he's a little grumpy, you know, I apologize. Can't be helped. Absolutely. No problem, man. Um, so one question I want to get to early on, because I think this will uh, actually form a, a large portion of the of the conversation. And that is something that you've mentioned quite a lot on your channel. It's a, an idea a notion, and that is the, the notion of logos. Um, you mentioned it last night. You mentioned it in almost every one of your videos. Um, now, I think last night you, you talked a lot about this on your stream, uh, Scott. Uh, if you maybe can do a little bit of, a, bit of an intro there, and then we can see uh, what the other guys can add to it. Yeah, so look, um, Logos, essentially, you know, if you take the Christian um, definition of Logos, it's basically just the, the universal law. It's, um, it's, it's a law that applies to everything, okay? Um, St. John used it in, um, uh, no, so, sorry, St. Peter, it was Peter, yeah, used it in, um, um, uh, or was it John, Russell, help me out here. Now, the chapter John, uh, first chapter John. of the Gospel of John. In the in the, in the yeah. beginning was the, in the word. In the beginning was the word. 
Yeah, the word that is logos. The, word. And, the, uh, direct, that, the direct Greek translation used there is logos. Yeah. Mm. So essentially, the um, yeah the Greek the Greek translation because you know the uh, lingua franca then was the was was Greek. So everything was written in 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 Greek back then. Um, so it was the word was logos, and um, essentially what it is is um, you know it's basically a um, a universal law that applies to to everything. So the way that um, the world works, um, the way that certain things happen, um, and all of that. So it's basically just, in a nutshell, very basically, just the 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 way that the world functions. I guess, Dylan, you could help out help out over here. Yeah. So basically, the traditional idea of the logos is it's the word. That's sort of the I attend. Um, an Orthodox church in, in the, in the divine liturgy, which is a service they'll say, you know, they actually use logos in the translation. And one of the nice things about being in the Orthodox community is I can just sort of talk to the guy, this old Greek dude. I'm like, Hey, what does logos mean? Can you like break it down for me? <laughs> and uh, basically <clears throat> what it is, is it's like the word. Yes. But it's also sort of truth and sort of, it's, it's sort of like, almost like being itself it's in and, and they're not so the thing to keep in mind when you're comparing biblical use of language compared to uh greek use of language is that they'll use pre-existing words but they take on a different meaning in the biblical context right so logos is one of those one of those things so the word of god right so that's sort of the logos so christ is sort of the in the biblical uh, context, sort of spoken into being by God the Father, right? And then he sort of brings creation into being. So from the word of God springs the Lord, Christ, and then Christ sort of goes on and then brings creation itself into fruition. And he's the sort of person by which we interact with the Father through the Logos. Yeah, so how that how that works in practice is we're basically bound by this law. So it's it's this law that 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 we exist and stuff. So you know we're able to philosophize and to think and all that sort of thing. Remember, we're made in the vision of or the um, yeah the vision of God and and all of that. But we were we're able to um, uh, you know think and 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 we're bound by the law of logos again. And if you're anti logos, then you are against the law and in rebellion against the law. So, you know, um, things like, um, I don't know, um, one of my favorite things that I like to use is that idea cam that was created. I don't know if she created it, but she definitely was very fond of the idea of objectivism that that old witch, um, what's her name, Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand. Um, yeah, she's a real witch, that woman. But anyway, um, uh, you know that's that's anti logos that's essentially you know the idea of you know the having to be selfish or being selfish is good and stuff that's anti anti logos if, as an idea communism is also anti logos yeah anything that turns anything that turns the world up tries to attempt to turn the world upside down is anti logos and logos is the one that uh, uh, is supposed to bring is the force that uh, or the um mm. The, the ultimate law. goal, the law. So it, it is what keeps everything in line is logos. Mm -hmm. Yes. But then if you if you take this concept and this notion of uh, how the world works in the order of the world, how does that relate to specifically your worldview in regards to the type of worldview you use to to analyze politics and to analyze the world around you? Well, it's like I said, um, I don't know if we were live when I said this, but it's, if you wake up in the morning and the world and you see the world around you and everything that you were raised as everything that you were taught as, you know, myself, Russell and Dylan are both Christians. And it's quite an interesting thing is that Russell is a Calvinist. I'm a Roman Catholic and Dylan is an, a, a Greek Orthodox. So we've got these three interesting, you know, uh, theological ideas between the three of us but we all agree that um if you wake up in the morning and the world sucks and you're just angry at how everything is upside down everything that was good and uh and 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 
pure and everything is now all of a sudden cuck and dirty and everything that that is cuck and dirty is now good and pure. So, for example, things like um, divorce. Uh, myself, Russell and Dylan, we don't believe in divorce. Um, you know, there's certain ways of, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, only divorce, but abortion is another thing. We don't believe in it. We believe it's murder. But, you know, these days it's promoted as something amazing. You know, pornography is another idea. I mean, myself, Dylan and Russell have spoken about how vehemently against anti-pornography uh, we are. I mean, we're incredibly against it because we believe that that's a, an attack on the most natural thing known to mankind, which is reproduction. And that's what, that's what I mean, now we're going to sound like some like severe prudes and stuff now, but that's what sex is for. It's for reproduction, okay? Unless, you know, you're, you're a married couple and stuff. Yes, you can enjoy it, you know, but, you know, sex is a sacred thing. And at this point, it's it's promoted and it's everywhere. And it's, um, yeah, it's gross. Pornography is just, you know, we're vehemently against it. We believe pornography is a, is a physical attack on on on, on us. And I guess I guess there's probably a lot of uh, libertarians yeah. in your comment section laughing at us at the moment, but I don't care. And, and I guess to bring that back to the Logos thing, so uh, sort of where and sort of what you're talking about, Ernst. So to sort of ground this all, very basic level, right? So how do we sort of orient our worldview, right? These are sort of fundamental things that we got to answer before we get to these other questions about what the good life is and so on and so forth. So for me as a person i look at creation and through various you know theological arguments you know we're not here to you know go through aquinas's arguments for why god exists or do the transcendental argument or anything like that but so supposing that one does sort of believe in god and then that the logos the word of god spoken into being which is christ from the father is his is you know is the messiah and that sort of orients the way you sort of see the world right so the worldview is not sort of merely a construct in the way that we see it. It's sort of a, a product of insight, right? So looking at the world, logic, deduction, philosophy, and also most importantly, divine revelation. So you can, you know, it's sort of like the philosopher's God, right? So Aristotle, God, the builder, you know, he philosophized the existence of God from that. And you can do that. But as to the sort of person, as to who and what God is, that's sort of where you have to rely on divine revelation. And it's a leap of faith. You know, we recognize that. But um, that sort of way in which sort of the person of God is the Lord, and that's sort of what we use to orient the worldview. So you can deduce a lot of these things in intellect, philosophy, flu reason, but as far as the specifics, that is sort of relevatory. Hmm. So uh, while we're on this topic, while we're talking about uh, specifically your religious foundation of your, your worldviews, uh, something that I found very interesting that I think uh, I'd like to get into is uh, from your perspective and, and from your view, what does the Bible say is the role of the state and what should your relationship to the state be? Go, Russell. Go, go, go. Go, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually busy, Ernst, I'm busy working on an article um, on specifically writing a bit of an article to be hopefully published through one of our channels uh, quite soon. And the, the, the very short, simple answer is this. Uh, I mean, today, this, I've got, no, I'm back here. I'll explain. I'll finish explaining. All right, cool. Start from the beginning because that's when you end it. Uh, it is, the state is just yeah. All right. All Look, right, um, the state is just another level of authority within society. Okay, it's not anything else um, that is anything special in terms of the, any sort of great reverence. In that, if you look at it's very simple. We were talking very early about the the the, the government, the very small government of the family, and Scott specifically mentioned. It was God at the head of the family, then the husband, then the then the wife, then the children. There's that specific hierarchy, all right. Now everybody within that, the the the, the, the husband and the um, wife have got their own areas of authority, okay. And either the husband or the wife can be out can actually 
fall can actually mess up and move outside of their given area of authority. And when that happens, it's actually the responsibility of either the husband or the wife to bring the whole system back into line. So there is, but, at the, but at the same time, respecting the hierarchical nature of everything. So it's a matter of uh, 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 there being um, hierarchy, but at the same time, equality. Um, a, a lot of people can't seem to grasp the two that you can have equality and hierarchy at the same time. You know, we're talking about a lot and of things that R people Russell, can't let's just make this these. crystal clear that we're not talking about the Marxist idea of equality you now. Okay. It's just yeah well look no no look, we'll, we'll, it'll, that'll become plainly evident but and br to bring that back to the state okay um the state is a the, the state is definitely something that is ordained by god it is an in, it is a institution and a an authority that is uh, given of god um to actually uh, uh, keep society in line okay and it's very often that uh, uh, society, the, the, the um, masses of the people are out of line. And it's the state's authority to bring the masses of people in line. That's why we've got courts of law to, come to, to punish criminals, to send them to jail, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes it is, it is actually necessary for the ordinary people to bring those who are ruling over them in the state into line. Um, and the big picture, what I'm getting at is that uh, uh, a lot of Christians have the misconception that um, God gives the state a blank check because they read Romans 13. You know, Romans 13, 1 said, uh, it goes, it says, be submissive to the state because they are an instrument for your good and, you know, submit to authority. It, 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 if, you, if you have an understanding of biblical authority first, like what I've explained to you, and then you go and read Romans 13. Okay, and you read it. Now you're going to read it with a proper lens uh, on. You're not going to give the government a blank check. Nobody on this earth, God doesn't give anybody a blank check. All authority is delegated authority. So, and it's actually all of us, we all need to work together to make sure that everybody else stays in line. And to the Christians that say, oh, wait, you must just submit to the state because their authority is from God and that's it, full stop. Well, Okay, great. Next time the abused wife comes to you, tell her to go back to her husband because uh, that husband's in authority over you and you must just submit to him. I want you to do that as well, just to be consistent. And that's what I'll have to That's pretty much, I think I've pretty much explained how I view um, how authority works. I don't know if you want to, guys want to add anything else. Yeah, no, I guess that's basically it, Russell. So basic, to break it down real simple, you have the institutions of authority and those themselves are legitimate, but they are subject to, you know, <laughs> chastisement, both by the population competing power structures. And, you know, if you look at believe biblical accounts, uh, divine chastisement as well. Right. So the Bible's full of stories of, you know, and then Israel started doing child sacrifices to Moloch and then the Lord punished them, you know, sort of thing. Or, if you look at sort of um, to do a historical example, you have the monarchy in France and, you know, they were doing their thing and uh, speculating in things that they shouldn't be with the Tennessee uh, Valley. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to I'm trying to remember my U.S. history here. But anyways, there was massive speculation on the part of the French crown. They started putting their people through undue financial burden with their profligate spending and debts. And then as a result, you know, they were unthroned. Now, obviously, you know, we're not fans of the French Revolution, but the fact that um, there was a reaction to that abuse of power is perfectly natural. And just because it's just to have a king doesn't mean that king is the guy who should be in charge, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Scott? No, pretty much. They've said it all. I, I, I'm with them 100%. Yeah. yeah. Right. So as I understand it, uh, the state does have a role, but uh, you should not be completely just a, a slave to the state. Uh, the state can also be tyrannical or be your master to a certain regard. and uh, Or the state can be your god, even as we've seen. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then uh, I think this touches yeah. on the, the next topic that I wanted to get into.
and that's the topic of the authority in regards to what is i mean when you look at when i'm listening to what you've been describing so far it seems that authority seems to be playing uh, authority and hierarchy play a very strong role in your worldview but where what is a healthy form of this and where does it turn tyrannical or where do, where does it cross the line when it becomes either tyrannical or imperialist or oppressive can i can i just yeah, so you'll, you'll you'll hear you'll hear on our channel um at is we we talk a lot about um so here's the thing okay um so a lot of people call me a conservative because i'm a christian you know and they assume you know Christians are conservative and stuff. And yes, I am conservative. Uh, but you also get a lot of conservatives out there that are not Christian. They just identify as conservatives because they want their wives to house school or they like to cut their grass on a Saturday. And they think that that is what being conservative is all about. But it's not. So um, with us, authority is like dylan said it's divine authority it's that um it's that great chain of being right dylan it's the great chain of being okay which yeah, starts yeah which starts um from the top so it starts with god and then it runs down from there and the moment the moment people start drifting away from that law like russell said there's a golden thread that runs through the entire thing okay and the moment they that uh people start drifting away from from what the law is and the bible's clear on what the law is i mean let's face it it's not it's not um a lot of people think that the bible is some sort of obscure book and and, and strange and stuff then you've just never really read the bible or you've just never taken the time to study or go to bible studies or whatever it is you know or even if you're struggling with the bible and stuff go to old you know church intellectuals go look at Augustine, Saint Augustine, or um, Saint Thomas Aquinas, and, and all of these guys—they um, all know these things. So there's that line. So this is why we believe that you cannot be a conservative unless you are a Christian. Okay, and that's where, if you ask us, where does it start getting tyrannical? Or where does it start uh, getting too much? It's 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 at the exact point at where it passes that line. So the moment something becomes anti-logos is the moment that it's drifting into authoritarianism okay um the moment it remains um you know within the logos or within the law it it, it it's it's perfect it's absolutely perfect because then it's god's law so yeah i mean in a in a in a in a in in, in a practical perspective it is you know you have your family you raise your family you're faithful to your wife blah 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 and then that expands onto the community if you guys just want to add something else in there dylan and russell sure yeah i guess um in terms of legitimate authority so you know scott gave a uh, biblical sort of definition for that and i you know i don't disagree with it but if you look at the natural world right if you Let's suppose that you're able to, you know, this, the commies get their way and they're able to level society. But then let's suppose the aliens come and they say, oh, hey, guys, these commies look bad. We'll take them off your hands and they warp all the commies into space. So we're left with a blank slate again. What you're inevitably going to see is social stratification occur. Natural, spontaneous social stratification. Um you're going to see people excel at business. You're going to see people with charisma and leadership qualities come up. You're going to see people who are really driven. You're going to see people who are contemplative and you know just want to read books and philosophize, philosophize all day, right? So this hierarchy is, you know, yes, it's biblical, but it's also perfectly natural, right? So legitimate authority, I would say, is also primarily sort of built into who we are as human beings. You're going to see it come up. You're going to see it crop out. You know, the whole, you know, little Johnny, you can be whatever you want to be is not true. I mean, <laughs> little Johnny can't be a physicist if he's not good at math, you know, no matter how hard he might try or, you know, I could never join you the NBA. I could practice and States. practice and practice. But I'm... Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so. 
that that's yeah exactly the whole yeah, like, boy you're gonna be president someday i don't know he's he's probably not um so that's just sort of i guess that's basically it so the the hierarchy that occurs naturally in a sort of in any society right it's not whether it's in in the united states or in south africa or anywhere else you know japan whatever these are sort of spontaneous um expressions of human nature being played out before our very eyes and to deny that is to you know basically deny <laughs> reality itself which is you know that that gets you into problems and you try and level everything and then just cause a bunch of carnage Russell, do you have anything to add? Um, no, pretty much everything is said. Um, you know, it all comes back in a very simple thing. It all comes back to Logos, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. All right. Uh, and then yeah, and again, up. sorry, for, for anyone yeah, listening who might be, I was just going to say, for anyone who might be confused with this talk of Logos, this is a fairly abstract sort of uh, religious concept, and it is sort of, a little esoteric, but but believe us, it's a thing, and uh, I would encourage anyone listening to read up about it. You know, just don't take me as a as an expert in theology. I'm not. I'm just a guy who likes to listen to lectures in his free time and read. So you yeah. know, just s search it out on yourself. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. I think that's why I always tell people: don't just believe what I say, research what I say. That's pretty much my my motto on this channel. Go check out, check it out for yourself. Uh, don't just take the word of my word or my guest's word for it. Um, they might give you an idea, but, but go check it out for yourself. Come to your own conclusions. I mean, that's freedom after all. Um, and then something that I think uh, I wanted to touch yeah. on this at the beginning of the show, but uh, we actually got into a, on a different tangent before that was this whole. Uh, decentralizing of information that we've seen. Uh, I, I wanted to tie this to your introduction at the beginning where I said um, I'm seeing the YouTube ecosystem grow in South Africa rapidly in the past few years in terms of people just taking that leap and starting to create content, putting their views out there. Uh, I mean, that's how I started my channel is because I didn't see my views uh, pretty putting being put out there on, on social media platforms. So I just started it and people started watching my, my videos. But that was back in the day when the YouTube algorithm was a lot more forgiving uh, and actually a lot more free. Uh, now today you have priority created lists. So even if you take one of my videos and paste it verbatim, the title into the search bar, it's going to be the 20th result. Um, but what I'm seeing here in terms of South Africa is very fascinating and I want your thoughts on it is this very rapid decentralization of information that we're seeing in terms of the alternative media. I mean, we saw the US has already gone through this paradigm shift. Uh, Europe has already gone through this paradigm shift where a lot of people are, are ditching the mainstream media to get their views, news analysis, their uh, interesting topic discussions and long form discussions, no longer from their television, but from their favorite content creators, whether that content creator ha has uh, 100,000 subscribers or five subscribers, uh, you're building little communities, ideas are being exchanged and ideas are being propagated. What are your thoughts on the prospects for this growing ecosystem, specifically in the South African context when it comes to the decentralization of information? Can I mention something quickly, guys? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> essentially, it's, it's you know, myself, Dylan and Russell have, just to give you an idea of where we come from and, and how we you know, started the channel and why we started it and stuff is, and, and this will tie in with the, the whole um, decentralization of, of, of um, media and stuff. So myself and Dylan and Russell actually met on a Facebook group. Um, well, not myself and Russell, Russell's my brother. I've known him my whole life, <laughs> but, um, but Dylan uh, and myself and Russell. Yeah, the, the dirty oh. foreigner, me, yes. Yeah, the dirty foreigner. For those of you that don't know, Dylan is American. Yes, that's not a fake accent. And he lives in South Africa as well. So he does have a very interesting, yeah. uh, uh, it, it brings it brings a very interesting dynamic to our YouTube channel. So um, myself and Russell and Dylan basically if you just say so. I, Yeah, you do, Dylan. <laughs> Pat, pat, pat. Um, <laughs> we we were just sort of mates brying um, one night, and we just said, you know what, bugger this. Let's just start this YouTube channel. This was, you know, a little over a year ago. And um, we just decided to do it, you know. And, you know, we have mutual friends and stuff. 
and 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 that like to talk about politics and stuff. Check Christoph Smuts. <laughs> Scott met his brother. Christos, my boy. I know Christoph, yeah. I call him Christos. So anyway, um we we just said let's just do it, you know, why not? Um let's just uh start this channel and see how it goes. And I think that's what um that's what people need to start doing is just you know, just do it. Uh, get your get your voice out there. You know, if you have ideas and stuff, just get it out there. You know, um, and it all it, it it was kind of like a call to action for us because it's again it it it's our worldview. Myself, Dylan, and Russell have always been very reactionary, um, and it's a worldview. You see this world around you. You see the cultural Marxism going on around you, and it's destroying everything that you love. Do something about it. Get out there. But put your videos out there. It doesn't matter if you get five views, if you get 10 views, 20 views, whatever, okay? Get your, your videos out there. Become part of the um, truth community, right, of um, people bringing these these ideas <laughs> forward, these yeah. ideas forward. And I think, and, and look, I think that ties in with, with the reason why people are moving away from uh, mainstream media because, you know, things that things that you're seeing in front of you, people are not... Are not are not dumb, you know. They they see these things, and as soon as the flakes start falling off, or the scales start falling off of your eyes, and you actually start realizing, hang on a sec, that article that I read last night on whatever, I don't know if we're allowed to criticize mainstream media and stuff on the channel or whatever it is, but that article that we read on the Citizen, for example, was all bullshit, you know. It was all crap, you know, because it was just a lie, you know, whatever it is, and you and you can, you can literally see it in front of your eyes. And people are starting to realize that. People are starting to see that in front of them, and um, and it's quite obvious. It's not something you don't have to be the you don't have to be this major intellectual to do that. I'm not an intellectual. I'm just some dumb dude, you know, who likes to rant in a microphone, you know, and make videos. And people are starting to realize this. And I think that's why there's this massive thirst for for people to to rather seek their truth, again, it's coming back to truth, to rather seek their truth elsewhere than the the great empire that is the mainstream media. I think that's that's the that's the crux of it. You guys want to add something? And you, you touched on something yeah. there in regards to the, um, well, putting your views out there, even if you just get 10, 12 views. I think at the very least, then you'll be able to, if everything goes to shit and, uh, and, and the world is destroyed uh, by the radicals, then you will at least in the end be able to say, at least I tried my best. At least I was one of the oaks that tried. Um, and I think it will be very sad if you come to the end of the world and uh, you can't really say that I even made an attempt because I was I was too insecure about getting just 15 views on my video. 100%. And this is the thing, Ernst, it also, it also ties in with the actual word reactionary because it's a reaction. Essentially what we're doing, okay, right now, okay, the action is the wheel turning. So when the wheel turns, that's an action, okay? What we're doing is even if you just make a YouTube channel before you can get the wheel turning and stuff, just that just that action is is just that's the putting your hands on the wheel before it starts moving before you start pushing it forward so you've just at you the first move is actually putting the hands on the wheel and touching that wheel before you start pushing it forward and eventually it'll gather momentum and eventually people will start realizing and stuff the idea and the logic that things are just ah oh, the world's screwed you know bugger this uh, you know i'm just gonna have the boogaloo or whatever it is and blah, 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 the world's in a in a mess and stuff no start with your family start internally raise your family in in the in good values with good values um and and it'll spread from there mm. and before the other guys jump in i uh, just wanted to say it's quite ironic that you mentioned now they uh, you're going to start building momentum just put your content out there because I just checked, uh, you guys just reached 100 subscribers uh, live. <laughs> hey, there we go. Hey. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. Shooting um, the lights yeah. out over there. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to add what uh, uh, Scott yeah, said to what Scott said. Look, I mean, one of the reasons why we, like Scott said, um, we needed to get our views out there because you know, there's the old thing. One of the things that people forget is that um, if you don't get your truth out there into the public space, into the talking space, 
your truth dies out, so to speak. All right. If 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 we're not bringing the the arguments, if we're not bringing the truth, if we're not speaking out, then the other guys win. It's quite simple. Um, uh, 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 it is it is straightforward. It's a he who he, in the, in the battle of the, the 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 space. It is if you don't keep speaking your truth, your truth dies out and it gets lost. And it's quite simple um, from that perspective. And as in the Christian worldview, you are literally, you are actually expected to bring the kingdom of God to earth. That's literally as well as another aspect as to why that, so you're never supposed to have a defeatist mindset in the Christian worldview. You are always, at the, the, the kingdom is always forcibly advancing. So you are never supposed to stand back. You are never supposed to be scared of being one versus a thousand. You you never ever supposed to be, if you are outnumbered a million to one, you are not supposed to grow faith. All right. Yeah. That's the idea behind also the reactionaries. We're not afraid of being the minority. You know what I mean? Um, or even holding the minority view. If we believe it strongly enough, we're going to put it out there. And that is uh, who we are as uh, individuals. And then on the other side as well, with mainstream media, the problem, it's quite plain to see. It's amazing. If you watch mainstream media today, they actually believe their own propaganda. It is unbelievable um, the way they actually the follow their part. own lies. <laughs> you, 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 you watch this thing and you say, you guys can't be serious. You know, you watch these, you watch these news channels in particularly in North America. I mean, you've got to, it's, it's like laughable. You guys are making fools of yourself well, you in South Africa it, as well. You can see it in South Africa as well with uh, News 24 saying, uh, so Ramaphosa is majestic. It is unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> like a bald. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. so what I'm getting uh, at, it, it, it's, it's, it's this sort of, it's this sort of moment in time in history where people like us are filling, are, are coming into the picture, is what I'm saying. And we don't really care if we're the minority view. We're not here. We're not concerned about the views of the majority. We're here to simply bring um, the kingdom to earth in some way. Like we're going to be bringing Lo Logos is rising. Logos is coming. You know, and if we're going to bring it, we're going to bring it. Hmm. Okay. Your, thoughts, uh, your thoughts on the decentralization of information question? Yeah. Um, so this is very interesting to see, you know, just going as a as a small lad growing up in, you know, small town Alaska, you're with before the internet and before and while the rest of the country is getting the internet, your your state's the last one to get it, basically. Um, you know, you're confronted with a very narrow field of view, mm. right? So when I was a kid, you know, it was NBC, ABC, Fox, and, you know, the newspapers. And ever since the advent of, you know, political commentators on YouTube, um, online publications, blogs, which were pretty big, you know, about a decade ago, um, that sort of started changing the game and people began to see a lot of the uh, falsehoods, frankly, that they're being confronted with. Uh, things which would just be espoused as fact were turned out not necessarily to be the case and very often blatant lies. <laughs> so I see alternate media as playing a vital role both now and going forward into the future. And I think particularly here in South Africa, it's, you know, it's just getting started and we're only going to see it continue to grow and expand. The only thing that sort of I guess different in the South African context as opposed to the United States is the proliferation of um, basically internet, right? So that's, it's, it's definitely less here than it is in USA. And I think that's going to have, so you might not see the as rapid a response um, and sort of shifting public perceptions away from the mainstream as you're seeing in the United States. But I do think it's, I mean, it's happening right now, right? <laughs> I mean, so people are listening to this stream right now instead of SABC, which they couldn't do, you know, 20 years ago. So that's um, that's yeah. uh, that technological development is a uh, is a very important one. And I think as South Africa becomes more urbanized and hopefully uh, richer, you know, <laughs> maybe we can hope in about a decade things will start picking back up and start really taking off. But um, I think these ideas can only go 
can only go up. The prevalence and the influence that alternate media is going to have can only increase in South Africa, particularly here in South Africa. And as the situation outside deteriorates and as people become aware of these different points of view online, it's only going to accelerate the increase. I guess the only thing I'll add to um, the long-term uh, prospects of alternate media in South Africa and across the globe is the, the effect that uh, censorship on some of these larger platforms um, might have is something we need to watch out for. And sort of supporting alternate tech sites like BitChute and whatnot is, you know, just as a way to safeguard and have backups and whatnot, it's a very smart thing. It makes your, uh, your institutions anti-fragile, as they say. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, and I think a central point there that you made is a point that I've made uh, quite a few times is the idea that we shouldn't expect uh, the South African internet sphere to just take off uh, like it did in other countries. Because what we have in South Africa is still, a, a, I wanna, the best thing I can call it is an internet culture, an internet culture in its infancy. Um, a lot of people have access to the internet, but they at the moment only use it for Google, Facebook, and maybe a little bit of YouTube to watch some how-to videos or cat videos. Right. Or whatever. Cat, cat so playing Africa, piano videos. Yeah. <laughs> so South Africa is still very much behind in regards to internet maturity, if that makes sense. So we will, I mean, uh, the best right, example yeah. of this is you can see the cross-pollination between channels. So let's take some alternative media channels, for example, a Roman Kavanagh's channel, a my channel, Willem Petzer, um, Ronaldo Gus. Let's take those as an example. All those channels have a lot of uh, the same fans that you see in the live chat, commenting, leaving comments on the video, sharing their content. But that is a, an indication of a pool that's still very small. A pool that's growing. I mean, back in the day when I started, this pool wasn't nearly as big. But uh, it's slowly growing. But people shouldn't be fooled uh, that the South, that to think that the South African uh, internet sphere is ripe for just an explosion of content creators and uh, almost like an alternative media renaissance is going to be hard at the beginning. And we're still in the in the the very early stages of it. But that's why I want to talk to as many uh, Oaks that have created their own content, that are creating their own content, um, especially those Oaks that go against the, the establishment narrative. I think it's very important. And uh, the metaphor I always use is the, the ecosystem online, where if the ecosystem isn't diverse, if the ecosystem is just taken over by one weed plant, um, it's not going to function very well. It's not going to be a very beautiful ecosystem. It's not going to be very uh sustainable it's just going to have this one monopoly species taking it over and that's what we've been what we've been exposed to for the past i don't know how many decades in regards to the mainstream media is that they've just been the dominant predator on the media uh, landscape and it was the same with radio it was the same with uh, print uh, it was the same with television and now the internet uh, so the as the the lyrics go of uh, uh, tv killing the radio star uh, what i'm seeing here is internet killing the tv star and uh, this is uh, something that I think is very trauma yeah, traumatizing exactly. for a lot of these ma mainstream figures. Uh, but at the same time, we need to realize that it's not going to be easy. If you just create a, a channel, I want to encourage people to create channels and create content. But I also need to be honest with them and tell them that it's not going to be easy. You're not just going to end up with a big audience right away. It's going to take a lot of hard work. And you go, you're going to Definitely go to not. the stream in terms of uh, censorship and the uh, suppression of your views, especially if you go a little bit against the establishment. Yeah, we've been going for over a year and we've just hit the 100 mark. So, yeah. hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're over, and, a tremendous, we're over tremendous success. And, and, and huge, the reality is, huge. We're winning yeah, bigly right now. Yeah, it's bigly. <laughs> So, uh, Adams, the, the 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 thing is, is that you know myself, uh, Dylan and Russell, you know myself and Dylan both have very young kids and stuff, and you know, so we're we're fathers, we 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 have day jobs and everything, and we're trying to keep all this down and put out all this content. So you know, we we you know we work really hard at this, and um, it's not it's not that it's it's. Definitely, like you say, it's just not not easy, you know, putting content out and being consistent and all of that. I mean, we took a six month hiatus when myself and Dylan's wives were uh, my, my wife and Dylan's wife were pregnant at the same time. The, his son was born within a week's difference of my daughter and stuff. And, yeah. you know, and we took a hiatus because of that. But um, now we're back with a vengeance. And uh uh, just because, you know, we saw, again, this world crumbling around us 
And we said, look, we can't sit back and, and just let this happen. We have to, you know, speak up about it. Hmm. No, exactly. Hey, Do Scott. you guys have anything to add? Hey, Scott. Uh, what? Mm. Action. Action. <laughs> this seems Action, to be a little indeed. bit of a... Uh, I guess the only... Th what? That seems yeah. to be a bit of a meme on yeah. your channel. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is just saying... Yeah, the action meme, yes. Um, I guess the only thing I guess I'll, I'll add to this is, yeah, Scott's right. You know, there's, it's it's good to speak out when you can, if you feel you have the ability. And, um, you know, it does take a little bit of work on the side, but also if you enjoy doing it, you know, it's, it's not that bad. So Scott was really gung-ho about starting this YouTube channel and I like these guys anyways. So I was like, yeah, you know, at the very least I get to hang out with a couple of my buds and, you know, just, you know, talk about things that interest us. So you could also approach it from that angle. And as far as sort of the effects that this might have on wider society, you know, it's, it's not that I, <laughs> it's not that I expect or necessarily believe, you know, everybody in South Africa is going to watch, you know, a lot of good, uh, alternate media content and become based in red pilled and, you know, vote in the, uh, <laughs> vote in the, the ultimate reactionary government and a gold standard tomorrow. And, you know, all that <laughs> sort of thing. Now I, I don't believe that. And the, um, and, uh, the countervailing forces are real present and very well funded. So, um, you know, we, we have competition from the other side on these platforms as well. And, uh, you know, that's that's just something we have to deal with. Um, but ultimately, if you look at any successful movement uh, throughout history that was able to achieve anything, it was never everybody getting it and then everybody makes a choice and then everybody's happy with the choice. What ends up happening is you have, you know, for lack of a better term, elites who sort of buy into his ideas and they have the resources and the influence to sort of make changes happen, right? So you just need a loud enough minority who's willing to act as a pressure group, who's willing to, you know, speak truth to power or against, you know, corruption. And uh, that's basically the only way things are going to happen. So no, I don't, I, <laughs> if anyone in the comments like, oh, you know, Dylan's pie in the sky thinking, you know, I understand it's bad out there and I don't expect everybody to get on board. But the, at the end of the day, if no one's going to speak up and it's just, you know, black pills all around, then, you know, what's, what's the point of anything? You know, you might as well roll over right now. But, uh, you know, that's not what I'm about. So, so, yeah. so uh, the, truth, uh, the truth will out. Yeah, Adams, can I just read a comment that uh, this uh, sideliner opinions wrote over here? He uh, said, yeah, without Bible, the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it on screen now. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's it's actually a, a very very relevant uh, comment and and all of that because the our um, one of our slogans on our channel is get Jesus, get a wife, get kids, get a gun, and get reactionary. So those are the you know the, the Boers the Boers did it and they survived at, against all <laughs> odds. Makes it sound like preppers. So, I love it. Yeah. But it's, but you know, it's, it's, those are the, you know, the Boers survived, you know, they it's did true. It yeah. well. And this is, this is why um, myself and um, myself and Ernst were, uh, were, were chatting about myself and Russell's sort of agrarian roots and, and all of that. And I think that ties into our worldview as well in that we are, um, you know, of agrarian stock in the Eastern Cape. And I think that that impacts our, our thinking as well, just like the the Boer thinking as well. Mm. No, it's a uh, it's something that you see all around you, not just in South Africa. Is that uh, people from a, from the countryside background just see the world differently? They they see the world as uh, a lot more as it is than how they want it to be. Uh, only ivory towers can only be built in the city, as I always say. <laughs> That's true. Good job. Um, no, and uh, okay, right. people in Alaska uh, don't exactly think like people in LA either. So that's it's a universal thing you're talking about. Yes, the the uh, the rural rubes do not like the people in the city, and vice versa. Don't see eye to eye. So Graham, Graham says two Graham. McLarens for the price of one. How lucky! <laughs> not that McLaren family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, we've reached the end of the show. Uh, firstly, it was very interesting. I 
thoroughly enjoyed listening to your perspective. I uh, had a few very interesting uh, comments in the chat, but uh, before we go, uh, I'm just going to give uh, the microphone to each and every uh, one of you three to just give some final thoughts. There's no time limit, uh, just your uh, your final uh, condensation uh, of thoughts based on what we talked about tonight. Uh, we can start with Scott and then uh, Dylan and then Russell. Yeah, so um, basically, okay, first, you know, thanks for watching um, all of you guys that are listening to our channel or our, this live stream. Go and subscribe to our channel, obviously. And um, yeah, it, look, our our channel is 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 also sort of educational as well. We we bring out a lot of interesting um, um, videos um, about a whole bunch of different topics, um, from you know the failures of liberalism to you know libertarianism being satanism oh gosh that's gonna <laughs> that's not gonna go down very well <laughs> God. but um but, uh. but yeah we, we we you know we we're just a bunch of guys that have got these ideas and you know we're putting them out there and yeah go check out our channel uh, we've got a lot of content we've you know we've been making videos for over a year now and um yeah enjoy it yeah, Ruan, that's the whole thing. <laughs> that's what we're trying to be. We're trying to be as based as possible. Correct. <laughs> All right, Dylan, final thoughts? Uh, yeah, sure. So I just, um, man, what to say? I, yeah, I guess I just really enjoy being on the show and I enjoy talking with all of you guys. You know, Ernst, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I would encourage everybody to also subscribe. <laughs> you know, we're starting to grow a channel. I also recently started one of my own. It's called Beyond Left and Right. You can check it out there. I do sort of uh, analysis of, I do all sorts of things. I do TV analysis. I talk about culture, things like that. Short videos, five, 10 minutes. So if you want to check that out, that would also be cool. Again, that's on YouTube, Beyond Left and Right. And I would encourage everybody also to try and find sort of what you can do in your own life. A lot of um, people I've noticed of sort of our persuasion, you know, they kind of get down, they get black pilled and whatnot. And they think, oh, it's everything's just going to shit. And ah, just screw it. I'm just going to bury a bunch of Krugerrands in my backyard and hope for the best. Um, you know, that's that ain't no kind of way to live. You got to work on building things, right? So building communities, getting involved, finding out where you can help supporting people that you think are doing good work um and yeah just don't don't <laughs> don't be don't be on the sidelines i guess is my final point hmm. uh russell you have the final word of the of the three and then i'll i'll uh, give my word as well great uh, thanks Ernst, so much for having us on it's a really a great privilege and Thanks to everyone um, who's taken time out to watch and listen to us. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I would just like to leave a final word and a word of encouragement for people is that um, you, you, I said it earlier, you know, never, never, never. One of the things that the um, powers that be that are that are coming against us, the, the hard leftists and that sort of thing, they want you to feel isolated. They want you to feel alone. They want you to feel like nothing can be done. All right. But all it takes is one or two little people to start standing up and you inspire others. And that way we push these guys back. Um, that is, if I could leave just one thing with people, that's my message to you. Don't think because you're in the minority that your view doesn't mean anything or that it is not of any significance or anything like that. Don't ever fear the majority. And that's what I'd like to uh, leave with you guys. Let right. us rise up against this government and say with resounding vigor that freedom lives and marches on. <laughs> Indeed. All right, excellent. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's, as I said, a very interesting discussion. And uh, if everyone, anyone in the chat, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I deliberately uh, do my shows at 7 during the, uh, the 7 o'clock news, uh, just to make a point. Um, but yeah, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you like what these Oaks were saying, uh, go check it out. They have a their link to their channel is in the description. Um, uh, go check it out for yourself. If you don't like what they uh, what they say, uh, at least you're not being forced uh, to or government mandated to subscribe to them. Uh, but yeah, thank you for tuning in, guys. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on your channel, and you are welcome on the show in in, uh, in the future again. 
And uh, yeah, I think my final thoughts would, thoughts would be that uh, what I'm seeing around me is definitely, uh, as Ruan Khoisan said in the chat, white pilling. Uh, in regards to seeing the decentralization of information people actually uh, i mean it takes a lot of guts to put your views out there and to, to put your views out there with your face and identity is even more gutsy but uh, i take my hat off to anyone that does that uh, as someone that uh, was anonymous for a long time and that uh, took the plunge eventually um i can completely understand the the people that uh, are not ready for that uh, i'm not knocking you in any way but yeah thank you for tuning in guys uh, i'll be doing another show this week uh, and then i'll see you on the next one cheers guys have a good one thanks adams cheers cheers adios